Hi, I'm Amar Sastry from AmarGuitar.com. In this video, I'll share with you my transcription and recreation of Trey Anastasio's famous guitar solo from the Went Gin with Fish. Stick around until after this performance and I'll share with you the foundational essence of what makes the solo so good. As many of you know, on this channel I make tutorial videos based on what you guys request, and I've received quite a few requests to break down the Wen Jin solo. Here's one email that really sums up why I decided to transcribe this performance. Hey Amar, love the site, keep up the amazing work dude, could you tab out the really epic part of the Wen Jin that happens around 11 minutes in? Trey plays these phrases that are so pretty and they sound really simple, I've only been playing seriously for a few years, but even I feel like I can learn how to play a lot of that solo. Greg. I couldn't agree with you more, Greg. There are so few Trey solos that are both epic and friendly enough for beginners to wrap their hands around, and the Went Jin is definitely one of them. I really want to encourage all of you to learn how to play this solo note for note because it will make you a better guitar player, and it will deepen your rhythmic and melodic sensibilities. With that in mind, I've tried to make learning this guitar solo as easy and fun as possible. Now before we start talking about Trey's technique or the music theory behind the solo, let's just remind ourselves that the purpose of a good solo or a good jam is to create an unforgettable emotional journey for the listener. If you don't feel inspired about what you're playing, it makes it much harder to inspire the audience or your fellow bandmates. And that's the main goal with learning this solo or any solo on this channel. And that's to absorb and integrate these inspired improvisational performances, to learn how to use these techniques in our own playing, and to learn some music theory along the way. With that said, grab your guitar, let's dive in. As I mentioned in the Went Jin Anatomy of a Jam episode, the harmony of this jam is based on a repeating four bar chord progression that was conceived by Mike and then further developed by Page. We've got two bars of C, one bar of A minor, and one bar of F. Thank you. 
This chord progression is in the key of C, just like we have a 1-4-5 progression in the key of C, which is C, F, G. Here we have a 1-6-4 progression, which is C, A minor, F. Because all of these chords are within the key of C, we can just use the parent major scale, the C major scale, over the progression to solo over the whole thing. Alternatively, we could use the C major pentatonic scale as well because it's just five notes that are already within the C major scale. And for pretty much this whole solo, that's exactly what Trey does. He switches back and forth between playing single notes out of the C major scale and the C major pentatonic scale over all three chords. You can use these scales interchangeably in most scenarios. But there are two ideas that make this solo so beautiful and timeless. First is his use of rhythm, and second is his use of chord tones. A chord tone is just a note that exists within a certain chord. Let's check out our first four bars. Over the first bar of the C chord, he's playing the C major arpeggio in the A shape. Here's our C chord in the A shape. And here's our C major arpeggio in the A shape. We can see that he's really focusing on the root and the fifth of C. The root and the fifth are very stable chord tones, and it gives us this really grounded feeling. He combines that with a rhythmic approach that comes up in pretty much every tray solo, which is playing like a drummer. Just listen to the rhythm that he chooses for the first bar and a half. And if I, if I was going to beatbox it, it'd be boom, da, da, boom, boom, da. And that's pretty much identical to a classic rock beat on a drum set, which is why it sounds so good. He's thinking and playing like a drummer for the first part of that riff. And I'm guessing can, some of you can hear that the rhythm also happens to be similar to the opening rhythm of the Reba octave riff. For bar two, he slides up from the A shape of the C chord into the C major pentatonic in the G shape. Let's play the C major pentatonic in that G shape. You might notice that the C major pentatonic scale has the same notes as the A minor pentatonic scale, and that's because A minor is the relative minor of C major. In bar three, we've got our A minor chord, and Trey plays. These notes are very strong, stable tones over an A minor chord. And even though this is an improvised solo, he's selecting these notes in the moment because of the way they sound over the chords at the time that Paige and Mike are playing them. Over the A minor chord, we have the note C, which is the minor third of A minor, and then A, which is the root of A minor. Let's look at A minor in the position we're in, which is the E position, also known as a minor bar chord. And we can see these notes in intervals. Rhythmically, we can see that Trey is playing chord tones on the downbeats, beats 1, 2, and 3, 4, which gives us a very stable sound. We see that the third of each chord happens on the downbeat of this riff. But we see that he holds a note going from bar 3 into bar 4. This is a technique called playing over the bar line because we're literally holding a note over the bar line. This approach creates tension and anticipation, and we can see that this adds contrast compared to the rest of this lick. Mm -hmm. 
Over the rest of the F chord in bar 4, Trey is still using notes right out of the C major pentatonic scale. Paige and Mike are playing an F chord, and Trey focuses on the major 7th of F, which is the note E. Over the F chord, this spells out an F major 7 chord. He also syncopates and slides up on that E note, giving it an extra rhythmic emphasis. Syncopate is the verb of syncopation, and that brings us to our first takeaway. I absolutely love the Wikipedia definition of this term, syncopation. In music, syncopation involves a variety of rhythms which are in some way unexpected, which make part or all of a tune or piece of music offbeat. More simply, syncopation is a general term for a disturbance or interruption of the regular flow of rhythm, a placement of rhythmic stresses or accent where they wouldn't normally occur. We see that Trey uses syncopation in bars 3 and 4, which provides an exciting contrast to the more straight-laced, solid rhythm that he provided in bars 1 and 2, where he's focusing on the downbeats of every chord. With that, we've got the nucleus of the entire jam. We can look at bars 1 through 4 as the central theme for the beginning of this jam. In the next video in this series, you'll learn how Trey uses theme and variation as an improvisational tool to build and develop this jam. Hit like if you enjoyed this video, hit subscribe if you loved it. If there was an idea that you found inspiring or interesting, let us know in the comments. I'll see you guys in the next video.